Alrighty, it's Friday, March 9th, and it's just a little past noon. Well, I don't know if it's about, it's almost uh, 12.30. I wasn't too aware of the time. First off, I'd like to give out a shout to my YouTube buddy, uh, Angela, and say hello to Emily the Brave. These are the two shoutouts of the day. Uh, moving on, it's uh, we, another successful day, another successful news broadcast last night. Uh, I'm not now due to the due to the news. I'm not finishing any earlier than three thirty in the morning. So, uh, there is a bit of exhaustion starting to set in. But if you notice on the uh, channel page, you'll see down at the bottom there, there's a new channel there called Ore Institute. And that stands for Oceanographic and Atmospheric Research Institute. That's what the Ore stands for. Ore is Ocean, Oceanographic, Atmospheric Research. That's the acronym. Uh, that channel will feature all of the what we call the so-called climate research will be in there but uh, there really isn't anything such th any such thing as climate research uh, if you know your physics uh, is essentially is is essentially essentially atmospheric physics it, it, it's, it, it's a physics it's uh, fluid dynamics uh, thermodynamics rolled into one into one field and specifically applied to the earth but the principles remain the same so if you understand thermodynamics if you understand fluid dynamics then understanding the climate really isn't too complex in terms of what you need to be looking for uh, the actual understanding of the actual mechanisms while you can get they said you can get the general understanding of things getting down to the more specifics is a lot more complex and this is sort of what's going on now is that most people are talking about global warming yet a large chunk of global warming if you look at the basic physics and uh, the basic thermodynamics of it really doesn't make sense there's the uh, global warming does not have its basis in the fundamentals of thermodynamics and uh, uh, fluid dynamics it uh, assumes that there's this excess of energy coming in that really shouldn't you know this excess energy, this global warming, you, you have to under, you have to sort of find the source of where the, the, the extra heat's coming from. Right? In order for global warming to occur, you have to have extra heat putting put into the system. You can't simply create it; it has to come from someplace. And they argue, well, this is it's because of the carbon dioxide. The problem is, though, is that carbon dioxide is not a heat generator. Carbon dioxide, based on its chemical principles and the way it behaves, its physical properties, is heavier than air. This is why when you create um, uh, the smoke under the dry ice, it falls to the floor. And this is true uh, when they have these bubbles inside of lakes of carbon dioxide, these volcanic lakes, and as it breaks out and the bubble breaks, and it spreads out, it goes across the land and, 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 and kills everything around because it hugs the ground and snuffs out life. Only when it's su sufficiently heated, in other words, heat has to be put into carbon dioxide, does it have the ability to dissipate into the air. Otherwise, it simply runs out and thins out as far as it can go until it's no longer a threat. And so the question is now, because there is the temperature that there is up up 
in the atmosphere where it's once you go, start getting to a higher altitude, it starts getting colder. Carbon dioxide should precip precipitate out, and then it, th that's what it does. And it, it dissolves into seawater, dissolves into any f any large body of water. It actually dissolves into. It, it, this is just the way you have uh, with uh, any uh, soft drink that uh, is fizzy. That's a dissolved carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide doesn't actually. Uh, behave as the greenhouse gases. They say, they talk, they talk about a greenhouse gas, they always talk about, oh, you go walk into a greenhouse and you see how warm it is. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, there are other gases that are involved in the greenhouse gas, and the primary greenhouse gas is is n not a true gas on its own, it's a quasi-gas. Uh, meaning that the primary, <laughs> the primary, uh, it's more of a vapor than it is a, a, a than a true gas. Uh, so, and I think it's it's directly measured. We know this. The, the, any farmer who knows uh, their crops, any planter knows the crops, uh, they knows about this one factor, and it's and it's, and it's measured it, it's on every barometer. It's, it, it's the humidity inde index. Uh, and, it's, and, and, and people, when they, they come up to uh, any place that's humid, like Toronto or even something Boston, you know, any place that's humid, and you know what, what humidity does to the environment. That's not carbon dioxide. That's water vapor. So you know how hot things can get inside of a place that's humid. And humidity always makes, makes it worse. Carbon dioxide, where carbon dioxide comes in is... is if you're in an enclosed building, uh, and they say that these new airtight, airtight, tight buildings are, people are getting sick in them, and people don't know why they're getting sick. Well, look up something called carbon dioxide narcosis, and you'll get a better understanding of why people are getting sick in some of the some of these airtight buildings. Because if you don't scrub out the carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide is difficult to scrub out. Uh, you cannot simply suck it out with a with 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 a with an, uh, a ceiling vent, because again it's heavier than air and it tends to hug the ground. Carbon dioxide is more, is difficult to sort of scrub out of the out of the environment, and if you don't scrub out, uh, a carbon dioxide out of the environment, this is where you can have people starting getting sick. You, you feel nauseous. You you know, you feel sleepy. You feel lethargic uh, with uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, higher levels of carbon dioxide in the environment than you should have. And there is a lethal amount that, uh, will, 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 that will literally uh, uh, cause you to suffocate because you're taking in a breath of air, but it's not air, it's carbon dioxide. And your body tries to expel it, but as it expels it, it just simply brings in more carbon dioxide, and that's where your body starts to shut down from its lack of oxygen. So, this is what oil will do. Oil will look at, at the physics of what's going on. Also, look into uh, the exploration of the oceans. I've been working on this for a while now. Uh, primarily on the atmospheric side of things, because I really don't have access to uh, uh, the uh, the satellite data that I need to do work on the oceans. The oceans going to I've done some work, but not enough uh, to say there's an actual project going on. I have a, an atmospheric project going on where I'm tracking uh, the change in not necessarily weather patterns. Again, this is more down to thermodynamics. Uh, I've got a thermodynamic observation uh, uh, system on one of my computers. And using these thermodynamics, uh, it's, it's from the satellites. Their satellites uh, bring in pictures in a variety of different wavelengths. And if you choose the right wavelengths, you can put together a good thermodynamic picture of what's actually going on in the in, in the atmosphere. Uh, 
in terms of its observation. And it becomes, once you've got that, it becomes more or less like astronomy. You look for recognizable patterns that occur year after year after year. And then you start tracing these patterns. And I've been doing this now for, for a little over six years. Uh, I've got a good uh, observational system. I'm just in, to the point now where I'm trying to improve what I have on my desktop. And I should be at the point where I can produce some documentaries uh, during the year, probably uh, sometime in the fall. I should be able to produce some documentaries based on uh, the uh, the virtual observatory that I have on my computer. And so this is the this is the Or Institute channel. The Or Institute channel will handle all of that type of research. There are other things I'm looking at in terms of like, like like you know the mechanisms of thunderstorms, uh, storm chasing, all of that is well within that area. Then that will be on that channel. Uh, but Big Bang Theory, well, as I said, is going to be behind the scenes uh, of a geek myself. If you want to see a nerd on 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 Facebook or uh, on YouTube with his own channel, this is it. This is the show. Uh, I am a cross between Sheldon Cooper and uh, Leonard, so this will sort of be a uh, uh, big bang theory of the comment sex will, will comment on a variety of the research that I've done the previous day and the stuff I'm going to be working on for uh, the day to come. So this is, uh, to some degree, the length of comments X has to do with what was done yesterday and what's being done, what's go hope, intending to be done for the following day. And it, it, you, you do, you always try to set yourself a schedule that, 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 that you want to achieve. And as long as you're at that, that, that schedule where you want to achieve, that you want to achieve, then you're always going to be pushing yourself to, to do better and better every day. If you, pull back your schedule and really don't schedule anything so they don't have any goals for the day then at some point in time you're going to start falling back and, and not being able to achieve much of anything so but it's hard sometimes you just you know even though you do schedule something uh, you'll end up blowing off the entire day doing nothing just sort of fooling around and uh, uh, you know flipping around the YouTube channels or flipping around the TV channels anyway uh I'm going to cut this short for today because I do have uh, uh, two episodes to get out today and I also have to film the surprise for uh, uh, and Proper Ladies that will come out on Saturday. So I will see you later. I will, for those of you who are following the news, I'll see you tonight. Alrighty. Have a great day.